How can you get back together after a bad breakup? I'll explain you what you should be doing using this toothpaste jingle. I get my ex back .com. Everyone deserves a second chance. Sometimes when we pour toothpaste on our toothbrush and we put too much of it, it's really hard to put the toothpaste back in the tube. This is what sometimes happens in after a breakup. Sometimes things that we say, things that we do make too much harm, create too much of a, a drama and resentment that it's impossible to get back together. Sometimes the damage is irreversible. You've been bad to each other. Um, you had obsessive uh, behavior after a breakup. For example, you, you spammed your ex, you showed up at their place, uh, you talked to their family, you wanted to convince people in their, you know, their best friends, like, you know, tell her or tell him to bring me back. Perhaps you betrayed their trust uh, before or after the breakup. It's something you need to assess that I help my clients assessing before I onboard them is to know whether their relationship is recoverable because sometimes the dynamic thing that we said, thing that we did, make the relationship impossible to recover. Have a look um, in the description. There's a link for you to take this quiz. It takes three minutes, but at least you'll have the reassurance whether you have a chance of you getting back with your ex. Now, bad doesn't mean impossible. Step number one, understand what happened. And it's very important for you to take a step back and analyze properly. So watching my videos, watching other videos online, is not enough. <laughs> it's really about the actions that you take. It's really about understanding because the root cause, the reason it didn't work, the reason you acted in a way, or the reason your ex acted in a certain way, you really need to dig, you really need in, um, what you learn when you, you, you study psychology is how you peel the onion, okay? So it's very important and it's very difficult for you to go layers and after layers, because it's very difficult to do it on yourself. Finding the, <clears throat> the answers around the emotional response, the, the toxic dynamic, how it, you know, why I found myself yelling uh, on my ex, or why did I find um, my ex yelling on, at me. Communications problem, why I was always struggling to express what I wanted, or why I was struggling to express things without being judgmental and aggressive or attacking my ex. This step is fundamental because it's going to be helping you assess whether you should recover. Because even if you have a high score on the test, it doesn't mean that you should get back with your ex. And if you give me a call and you want to know whether you should get back, I usually tend not to give my opinion. But when it's too extreme, I will make you understand whether you should get back with your ex or not. And sometimes we need to be reassured or we need the confirmation that there was something wrong and that that person is not the right person for you. So give me a call if you want to know. Uh, there are a few links in the description uh, to reach out. Step number two, leave it some time obviously. When there's a lot of tension, when there's a lot of stress, when there's a lot of anger, the pain would reduce with time. When you break an arm, when you break a leg, it's really painful the next day. Six months after it's different. It's exactly the same with emotional pain. Because our brain filters out bad memories and keep the ones. And our brains filters out, because when it's linked to emotion, the way we recall information, the way we recall memories is different. That's why no contact, in that case, if the breakup was really bad, no contact is essential. You have to do no contact at some stage. Oops. <laughs> Step three, do the right things. Um, the problem with bad breakups is that you're sort of counting points and you say like, yeah, but she said this or he did this. So I need to get back at him. I need to do something. And so it's very easy to fall back into those toxic habits and be sort of lost in that dynamic, you know, for example, like jealousy, manipulation, you know, they, you see that they're using social media to get back at you or they are dating to make you jealous and stuff like that. Reflect on your actions, every single action that you make every day whether it's personal or towards your ex, and try to take some distance. Use something that I call the grandma filter. 
Whenever you're about to do something, or about to, whenever you're about to say something, think twice, thinking, if my grandma was receiving that text, or if my grandma was learning about what I'm doing, would she be proud of me, or would I be ashamed of doing this? If you're not comfortable that your grandmother knows about what you're doing, don't do it. If you think that your grandmother will be proud of you for doing this, do it. Because what matters is the narrative. What matters is when people will look at the story, is what are the things that you did right. The manipulation things, the trying to get an answer, trying to bend the reality, trying to bend things, won't work long run. And even if your ex, you know, you keep the score and you feel like your ex, you know, did too much damage and you want to really get your revenge, that's not how you get back together. That's not how you fix things because you also do it for you. Step number four is consistency. It is so important. It is so undervalued. Trust can and should, and it's the only way to, to regain confidence, uh, to regain trust is over time. What would happen is that your ex will scan for threats, will scan for danger. She or he got hurt or scared about the relationship because of the way you felt, because of what you did. And they will have this confirmation bias that all dumpers have where they feel like, we've tried, he can't change. I've told him, I've told her, he can't change. And the problem you have right now is that if you do it right 99% of the time, that's not enough. Because they will only see the one person that you've missed, the one person that confirmed their idea. The one person where they felt like, they're so needy. They can't leave, you know, respect my freedom. Or they always argue, they, they, are, um, they always yell, they always get mad. You spend four hours on a date, talking in a mature way, being able to express things using non-violent communication and, and so on and so forth. If you end having a fight, yelling at your partner, everything that you've done is gone to the trash. Consistency is what is so important. And this is why my methodology, rather than helping you to get your ex back as quickly as possible, because I think it's a bad way to get back with an ex, is to really make sure that you take tiny steps of progress because it's way easier to be consistent this way. Because if you push yourself too much, if you try to accelerate things, this is when you have a risk of not being consistent. It is when your ex will see, hmm, I knew it. He couldn't change. Step number five, accept it might not work. So the stages of grieving process ends with acceptance. One thing is sure, and one thing you need to accept right away, your relationship with your ex is dead. So think about this with the end in mind. My relationship is dead. Six months from now, one year from now, what would people think about how I dealt with the breakup? If you know, I speak with my parents, we speak with my friends. What would they say about how I dealt with the breakup? What would they say about me as a person, as a partner? The thing is, when you have this end in mind approach, which is, by the way, one of the seven habits of highly effective people, get the book, read a summary of the book. If you don't, it's a very good book. They will see it. They will see that you've done the right things, that you've approach things with maturity, that you've tried to address some of the things that weren't okay with you, that you've tried to be a, bit, a better person, to understand their needs, to understand what needed to be done. They will see it. And if they don't, I don't think that's the right person for you. If they care about you, if they feel like you're someone special, if they don't have the honesty if they don't put aside their resentment, their anger, the hard feelings, and don't see the progress, 
You don't want to get back with someone like this. You don't want to get back with someone who doesn't appreciate the effort you're making, right? You're better off. And it's too bad for them because everything that you're doing right now, you're doing it for you and you're doing it for the, your next partner who will benefit from this work. And if that's not your ex, too bad. That's her or his loss. This is the mindset you need to have. If you feel that the breakup was bad, really assessing your responsibility, what needs to be done. And look back at things saying, okay, the breakup was bad. That's my responsibility now to make, it, make things right. And you'll be at peace with the decision. We'll be at peace six months, one year down the line, when you look back and thinking, I've done the right things. I hope this was helpful. If you need any other tips, any other help, don't hesitate to reach out. I'll see you next time. Bye. For a long time, get up, now I ain't a quitter. Toss me the ball, I'm a really big hitter. Big picture, I'm a straight killer.